Welcome to Valence Developer Diaries number 31. And today we're going to talk about something that was, I don't remember when it was added. It's fairly new, right? Uh, local events. Yeah. Um, and, and just to be clear, so we always had, I shouldn't say always, but um, events that you can listen to from app to app have existed for a while. And, you know, there's no reason that an you know, you could that an application couldn't listen to itself. You know, you can fire an event against an application that application that same application can listen to itself. But it was kind of a waste because um, you know we're we're advertising it previously as a public event that anybody can listen to, but you were using the event only for your own use. So that's that's why we introduced the local events. So when you're creating a local event. You're just saying that the application is just going to listen to it, the event itself. It's not advertised to other applications, and and we're going to show you, um, you know, a an example of, of how you might use it. Right. Okay. <clears throat> we didn't prepare really for this one. Um, we have I, I created an orders and customers data source and grid. And I guess I was thinking, and Sean, I don't know what you think, but like list of customers, click the customer, see the orders, or from the main section, I could just enter an order and go directly to the the or I guess I don't know what I want to do here. Yeah, I think I think so. So the the scenario where this is most helpful would be um if you have two ways to get to the same spot yeah so 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 maybe let's just start with you know <laughs> not to be unimaginative maybe let's just start with a grid of customers yeah i have that so let me just okay. create that so, so oh. dd31 and we have this customers okay Here's so all right, good. And then maybe we have a chart. Maybe we have a um or yeah, maybe we have a uh, a, ch a chart of um countries. So basically we'll just have it that if you if you click on a customer, you see the orders for that country. If you click on the chart country, you see the orders for that country. So it's it's two ways going to the same right. endpoint. Okay. Um, you know, I know that might not be the best example, like, but um, I don't know if we have. Let me see if we have any widgets for charts at all. Probably not. No. Okay. Let me just save this. Okay. <clears throat> so we'll just create a simple data source that groups the customers so by I country. Groups the customers by country. So I just want country. See country and yeah. Uh, counts. Uh, by what? By C country. I think you need group by. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think you need an asterisk on yeah. that count. Okay. Let me just rename those real quick. Uh, Let's see. Okay. I'm going to order by type. Let's type in this video. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So now just any simple chart or grid off of it. it you do a grid same thing right let's just do a grid screw it so 
So typically, um, while Jenny's doing this, I'll talk. Um, typically, in behaviors, we're going to have, you know, the, the the row click against both grids, and then the row click is essentially going to do the same thing each time. It's going to filter uh, this orders list and maybe do a hide show section and, and that sort of thing. So we're going to it's kind of redundant within behaviors. Yeah, to do the same thing twice. Yeah. Twice. So maybe maybe we'll do it. Maybe we'll do it both ways. I don't know. Well, so now we'll just... add now we'll add our orders orders section. Sure. Okay. And then we'll add our country count grid to the uh, main section. Yeah. All right, so when I click the customer grid, I want to see the orders for whatever country that customer belonged to in the next section. So do we want to just do it the, the old way and then introduce, or do we just go right to the... Yeah, think? maybe, do, I don't know, maybe the old way first. I don't know. Okay. Now, right. Was that orders going to have country in it? Let's hopefully... Yeah. Okay. Well, it's got ship to country, so we just use. Okay. It's not, no, but it's not the same. It's USA. Those aren't the same. Um. Uh. Well, maybe it matches on some of them. Okay. We'll see. While I'm doing it, like setting. Well, I'll just do it. Let's just see. Okay, customers. Real click. So country to country. No, 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 I show. I didn't show. And let's add our back button here. Back. Okay, so then the country grid. Yep. We're going to do the same thing. So this is, you know, this is this is the way we're used to doing it, right? This is the way we would always do it. And then we're going to have our same height show widgets. And maybe we set an app our title as well. So we've got, you know, multiple actions for each one. And they're all going to be pretty much the same, I would think. Oh, so I have, uh, title. This one I'll just do. No, I'll do customer and country. Or, or you have country there. Oh, perfect. There. Okay. Okay. And then you're uh, back set to previous title. Oh, right. Okay. Okay, so, here so notice, yeah, yeah, so notice for customers, so in our main section, we have our two grids, and we're doing, um, you know, because we're, 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 you know, going to the order section based on either click, we're essentially doing the same thing, right? Well, we are doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's, let's just save that, and let's just see that it, you know, at least works. Our data might look a little funny here, because... You know, we, you know, we didn't we didn't create those data sources to you know ensure right. that we have a match. Maybe uh, yeah, there we go. Maybe anything. Besides. Yeah, I think the see if any of them work. <laughs> no. Uh, this is a bad pick on the country. You know what I'll do? Maybe I will just yeah seventy sixty. 
let me just let me just change the uh, United States because I know it's USA in there. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe I'll just quickly do a yeah. If you can just over to USA them. and then also if there's any other at least another country. I can do that. Just give me one second here. What's your, uh, that's the valence sixth instance, right? Yeah. I assume that file is demo or H. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Demo or uh, demo or that's great. H. <clears throat> All right. Bear with us one second while Sean is. Doing a quick update to this table. Push down here. See how fast I can demo or underscore H. There we yes. go. Yes. So ship C N T R one. Are they all USA? Okay, try try USA now. I think that might be all USA, Nate. Okay. Yeah, I got the United States, but I have a feeling that maybe we don't have another country out there. Okay, and then I'll 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 manually. Uh... Okay. Update one. Maybe do Japan. I know yeah. that was the list. And I'm going to remove this. It looks okay. Japan. Japan is good. Should have one. Excellent. All right. Sweet. Okay. <laughs> All right, so sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> All right. So from here, we're clicking. We see the orders for this country, the United States, Japan. The same thing here. Right. Okay. okay. So now let's um so we'll introduce the uh, the the local event to handle this rather than those individual behaviors. So the first thing we might want to do is just let's just fire an event. So on our row click, we'll leave that stuff in there for now. We're right. just gonna let's go to the fire event. And so when you go to fire event, you'll see there's local and public. Local means that only this app will be listening to it. Public means other apps can listen to it. So let's add a local event. And we can call it, you know, like view orders. Okay. And then let's go down to our other uh, list. And we're going to do the same thing. Now you should see a menu option. So local, you should see that oh, view orders beneath it, right? Perfect. Okay. So now I think we just get rid of all those other um actions yeah, I, I can just dump them all okay <clears throat> so now we can listen for this event we should you know see it available add listener under local there's our view orders so now we can listen to view orders now Obviously, we want to do the same thing, but remember before when we did a filter widget, we had access to that record that was clicked on the grid. Yep. Um, in this case, so we don't, we're not going to have access to that same individual record. So this is where we want to create an app variable. Mm -hmm. So we can just go to set app variables. We could add a new one right on the fly here. Maybe we just call it, yeah, selected country.
and do so, the same thing for this. Yep. Now behind the scenes, we actually, if we just drag that, really we want to set the app variable first, then fire the event because our yeah. events come listen to that. But really behind the scenes, we do. I it. think we, would, we do that anyway. I think we we look for app variables first. We do. Uh, yeah, but maybe just good practice, just so you see it here, it makes more sense. Okay, so now our view orders. Now we can do our filter widget. And instead of, uh, you know, now we're going to, now we have access to app variables, you'll see. Yep. So there's our selected country. We'll do our set app, our title. We should still have access to that app variable. And then our hide show widgets. Sweet. All right, so it all should just work the same now. Nice. Nice. And then from the other list. Nice. Excellent. All right. Yeah, that just shows that <clears throat> you'll find yourself repeating a lot of the, you know, actions in here and behaviors and local events can clean that up so you only have one area that you're doing it for you know and, and we should also also mention too that the back end could fire that view orders of yes as well for many of the template programs you could call fire event and it would execute as well correct so you know sorry for the uh poor data execution in the beginning but hopefully yeah. Hopefully the point is clear on on how this works and you know why you might want to use local events. And you know, I you can, could make the, you could make a case too. Um, you know, I, I think we've created some applications where the event isn't even used twice. Um, you know, for example, you know we don't have two ways to get to the order section, but we created the local event anyway just because you know you might like it looks cleaner you just go up and see where everything happens you know rather than having to dig in and you know find you know expand you know within your row click your grid and that sort of thing it just right maybe visually uh, it might, might be easier to look at in behaviors as well yeah yeah before so, having to redo all of those events <clears throat> just because of a little bit of different data is you know this is much cleaner much easier too, especially if you make changes down the road, only one area, that event. Um, so if anybody has any questions, you could throw them in the chat. Yeah, does anybody have any questions? Seeing any, I'll, you know, I know you said this before too, is the local, you know, is meant for, your current app, not, you know, non-local, just the, 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 what do we call it again? Global or public, event, public. Yeah. That's for, if you're firing that event, so other apps listen to it, which we've done a, a session on that before already. Yeah. We're, we're and just, just in, um, local. And just to be clear, if Johnny would have accidentally made view orders, a public event, it still would have, it still would have worked. The difference is, other applications, if they go into event listeners, we're going to see that exposed as a public event. Um, someone asked, can you customize the filter? Um, I think you mean, are you talking about the filter widget, I assume? So if we go into the filter widget, and if you um, remove that entry, I, I, I'm not sure. I think maybe is it, does it mean if you remove that, that you still have the ability to um, create your own filter? No, he said, give him a second. He's typing it out. I will say while he's typing that out, you know, we do have the rules 
which Sean, we've used before too with events and or just filters period is, you know, I could have many, many filters here, but then I can go to rules and say only apply it if, you know, it's not blank. So if it has a value. Hey, Ron, you know what, if you want, you, you could just unmute your mic and ask. Yeah, feel free. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. I, I see what he's asking. Um, yeah. So, so what Ron's asking, he said, well, sure. In in this case, you know, we click a customer, we extract the, the country and we show the orders for that country. The other grid showed the country only. We click that, we show the country. Um, would you also be able to do if they click the customer number, or if they click the customer, then show the orders for that customer. And if you click the, the, the country grid, you know, continue to do the same. And the answer to that is yes. The, what we would do different is I think we would create another app variable. I can just do it real quick. There you go for customer. And when they click customer, when they click that customer grid, we would actually set it. I not set it. I didn't set it. I just say that. Customer. Yep. And then when they click the other grid, we would be sure to blank it out. Yep. So when they click this, we'll be sure to blank it out. Then we'll go back to our filter and we'd add the filter of Cosno to customer. And then we go to rules and we'd only apply that if it wasn't blank. So let's, yeah, I, I, in theory, this should work. Let's, let's just try it out. Hopefully that answers your question, Ron. Okay, so I'm, just, now, I'm just gonna do uh, United States. See everything here. Now I'll do United States for airlines. There we go. Yep, nice. totally. So yeah, thanks for that question. Yeah, yeah good so, question. Yeah. Another another way you can, yeah, I mean, in this case, it's kind of doing two different things, but it's all flowing through one event. Right. So, yeah, appreciate the question. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, anybody else? Nothing else in the chat? Nothing. <clears throat> okay. Um, if anybody right. else has anything, you can always oh. unmute too. Well, hopefully this will, uh, hopefully you guys get some use out of this and it could, you know, make your uh, behavior section a little cleaner. Yeah. Easier to manage um, and down the line change, right? When you're like, oh, I need to do this this way too. So, yeah. All right. Well, if there's no other questions, I think that's that's what we have for local events for in behaviors. So. Um, all right. Well, uh, thank you everybody for joining. As always, this will be uh, on our YouTube channel, um, probably end of day today or something like that. And um, thanks, Sean, again, and well, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye. All right, bye now.